Thank you for that love. He's yeah. so good. Yes. Praise the Lord. Y'all sing some more, please. Praise the Lord. Man, beautiful. That's good. Yeah. <coughs> he does so much we don't know about. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 Praise the Lord.
a lot easier for me to forgive him for something. And I'm, I'm thankful that I've got the Father that loves me and the Son that intercedes for me and the Holy Spirit that's with me. Yes, that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
mother's belly, born to prophesy. The prophet Jeremiah would lift his voice and cry. Be silent, folks demanded, go home, leave us alone. But how can you be silent when there's fire in your bones? It feels like fire, shut up in my bones. We leap and shout They say there's too much commotion There's too much moving about Don't tell me to be silent Or sit down in my pew Cause if you felt what I felt You'd be shouting too It feels like fire Shut up in my bones The Holy Ghost fire Shut up be small but he loves me
got to start Plus the Savior's loving kindness Overcame and won my heart Many say that I'm too noisy But I'll tell you the reason why If they only felt the glory They would shine I love seeing young people get up and sing for the Lord. There's now it's not popular at all. It's not. There's a whole lot more younger people out in the world than what there is in the church. Sad to say. So I praise the Lord for the young people that I see Him bringing up. I do.
say so. And uh, this little bugger back here got saved during camp. Testified, y'all. Yeah. All the people have saved me in before leading me into the life. Yes. I went with them. 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 Amen. 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 Yeah. All right. Amen. That PA sounds awesome tonight, don't it? Praise the Lord. That PA sounds awesome tonight, don't it? Amen. Amen. I thought it sounded the best I've ever heard in my life. It's good and clear. It had a revival last week, too. Amen. <laughs> good to have everybody here tonight. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalms chapter number 9. I wasn't going to preach tonight, and I... Uh, and, uh, uh, the Lord just led me in this direction, and uh, I want to preach on something that we don't hear preached about a lot, and most of the people tonight know uh, what most of the time that I do preach about, and I'll tell you the reason why that I do preach about it, because uh, it's what got me under conviction, Lord willing, I'm going to be preaching about hell tonight, and uh, I need to tell all y'all this. And uh, most everything that I have got to tell tonight, all of y'all have heard it. But I want to refresh us again. Yeah. And uh, I want us to, uh, to get a burden to pray. And don't ever, uh, you know, I've been uh, reading the Psalms for the past two or three months. I try to read them out loud to the Lord. And uh, it always brings a, a good spirit in my prayer place. And it always brings just a wonderful uh, presence of the Lord. And I begin to praise Him. But I was thinking this, this evening, uh, so many times, even as much as the Lord loves praise, uh, we still have got to stop and take time to cry and to weep for our lost people because we many, all of us tonight, have got lost people uh, that, that are dear to us. I mean, what would you do for your son? What would you do for your daughter? I mean, uh, there's, no, uh, there's no mountain that I wouldn't climb. Amen. If I, if I had to swim a lake and know that I'd die, I'd do it. If I thought it would save them, if I thought it would help them, and uh, so uh, hell's a real place. Years ago, I asked, uh, uh, we had back, that's back when we had probably 40 or 50 kids here, and a lot of the kids in the Christian school were saved. And uh, I had them to, that day, the Lord, had, I was praying that morning, the Lord had led me uh, to ask every one of them to testify that day. I wanted each one of them to give their testimony. And, uh, you know, you, you've got to have a testimony. Amen. Amen. A time when you was born again. Wow. Not when you decided to do better. Not when you decided to, amen, to make a change. They had to be a born again, a birthed again uh, experience in your life. If you haven't got that tonight, you're not saved. Wow. Amen. It's just as simple as that. Uh, who gives you the right to say so? Nobody. The Bible declares that. The Bible states that. Uh, in that in that service that day, there was probably out of 50 kids, there was probably 30 of them uh, that testified. And uh, uh, out of every testimony, I'm going to say 95, 96% of each one of them kids that testified, each one of them got up and said this. I went to church that night and the preacher preached on hell. And I got under conviction. And I noticed it that day. I, I did. I noticed it that day. Uh, just about every one of them Amen. Uh, talked about hearing a man of God uh, preach on hell. And uh, I'm not throwing this at any preachers. I don't preach it enough myself, but... Think back about the last hundred messages that you've heard. Amen. And, and Antioch cares plenty of preaching. We all uh, hear the word of God. Amen. Much. We hear it on the, on the radio. Think about what you listen to outside. How much hell uh, preaching do you hear? Amen. How much a uh, warning uh, do you get tonight about that awful place called hell? Now, a uh, friend, it's as real tonight as you and I are sitting here. Let me read the scripture to you tonight. You don't have to stand. I'll just read one verse of scripture uh, in Psalms verse 9 and verse number 17. The Bible said, the wicked shall be turned into hell. 
and the nations have that forget God. And I want to talk tonight about forgetting God. Amen. And forgetting hell. And, uh, brother, it's a serious thing tonight. The Bible said, I uh, fear not a uh, man who can only destroy your life. I mean, man can only take you so far. Uh, but the Bible said, but rather, I uh, fear God who can destroy both life and soul and cast it down into hell. Uh, amen. When you think about dying and going to hell, or do you even think about it? Uh, amen. Do you even realize uh, how, brother, where men go when they die? Uh, amen. Well, oh, how tragic of a thing that it is uh, uh, to think about the Bible said, uh, amen, that when, uh, uh, when a Christian dies, uh, uh, the Bible said to be absent from the body uh, is to be present with the Lord. Uh, I believe it just the way the Bible says it. Uh, amen. In the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, uh, the Bible said when you die, uh, amen, the spirit goes downward, uh, amen, or, the, or the, uh, the body goes back to the ground, uh, but the spirit goes upward. Uh, uh, we read about in Luke chapter number 16, uh, amen, about the rich man. Uh, uh, brother, I never read where he opened his eyes, uh, uh, brother, inside of a casket, uh, amen. He didn't die, amen, and find himself laying in a grave, uh, uh, brother, but the Bible said his mind and his body, uh, uh, brother, had moved on. Uh, if you'd have dug him up that day wherever he was buried at. Uh, amen. You'd have found a body, a uh, brother that was dead. Uh, but when he died, God gave him another body. A uh, brother, a body that can burn forever. A uh, brother and forever. Uh, amen. I want you to think, I know it ain't a pleasant thought tonight, uh, but I sure don't want to forget about it. Uh, I sure don't want to erase it from my mind. A uh, brother, why? Because, uh, uh, friends, I've got family that's uh, going there. Uh, I've got people that's uh, going there. Uh, brother Jeremiah, the great man of God that he was, uh, the Bible said that he, uh, amen, wept day and night. Uh, he said, oh, that my head uh, was a river uh, and my eyes was a fountain of tears. Uh, he said, I cried day and night uh, for my people. Uh, uh, Jeremiah looked out over his people uh, and he said, the harvest is past uh, and the summer is ended uh, and our people are still not saved. Uh, uh, brother, think about it tonight. Uh, brother, when a man dies, uh, uh, brother, his spirit goes back to God uh, and God puts that man in that hell, uh, uh, brother, to burn. Uh, uh, the Bible said, well, they's weeping uh, and gnashing the teeth. Uh, uh, now you think about it tonight. Uh, uh, brother, when you die and go to hell, uh, everybody that goes there, uh, uh, just a minute inside the city or even inside of the torment of hell, uh, and you're gonna realize one thing uh, and it'll be a torment all your life. And you know what you're gonna think of? And you're gonna think, oh God, I didn't have to come here. Hey Amen, think about that. It meant one thing. If you'd have died and went to hell, hey Amen, and you deserved it and you went there. But when you die and you enter in, brother, where they're screaming, the Bible said they wailing. And you realize that you didn't have to burn in that flame. You didn't have to go, brother, down to the region of the dam. But Jesus Christ, amen, made a way of that people wouldn't have to die and go to hell. He went to crew God got the, our people today have no, amen, mind of thinking about it. They've learned to do what Sir David said, amen, the wicked shall be turned into hell in your mind tonight. And you might say, I'm not a wicked man. Brother, you hear one thing and hear it well. If you're not saved and the blood of Jesus Jesus Christ is not upon your soul tonight. God looks at you the same as he does the sodomite, as he does the pedophile and the murderer. They ain't no degrees in hell. Once a man dies and goes there, brother, he's there forever and ever. The sun don't come up. The moon don't come up. It's outer darkness. Amen. While you're burning in hell and you're screaming. Amen. I don't know about you, uh, but there's some things that I think about. Uh, is it all right tonight uh, if I just remind us a little bit uh, about where most of our neighbors are going, uh, where most of our families are going, uh, where most of our children are going, uh, where most of our fathers and mothers are going? Uh, oh, I don't want to hear it. Uh, and you better hear it tonight. Uh, the Bible said straight is the way uh, and narrow's the path. Uh, and there are just a few that be uh, that enter the life, but 
There's not many. A brother that even reads this Bible. He can watch air upon our television. I spend it on their phone. But they don't read the pages of the Word of God. It's the most important thing in your life. The Bible said, What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Think about how many went to hell since we started this service. Amen. Maybe got up this morning healthy as a horse. But tonight, they're screaming. Tonight, they're wailing. They're saying, let me out of here. I got got to get out of here. But when a man dies and a woman dies and goes to hell, the door is shut forever and ever and ever. I'm just reminding you on prayer meeting night, he's a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And you better live right and you better live holy if you're going to make it to the city of God. Amen. I just a few weeks ago, I had to work at UPS every day and I was working going up and down the ladder. I got so tired. Hey Amen. I don't know, some of you probably have. I know a lot of the men have. Some of you sisters have. They really ain't nothing no more miserable than being tired. Hey Amen, really. I mean, I'm not talking about just... I wore out. I'm talking about just completely exhausted. Hey Amen. You know what I'm talking about. I'd work, I was working 15, 16 hours a day. Hey Amen. We're going up and down. It was just wearing me down. I come in and I, I just barely make it to the chair. I was wore out. I told my wife. I said, when I get like this, every time I get like this, I think about hell. Hey Amen. What about hell? I went and seen a wild man in the hospital one time. He had a disease Clyde and the Lord touched him. I'll never forget what the doctor said that day. He man he said he's better now of the disease but his body is so much has been in so much pain and he's made him to get so tired it's going to take him a few days to recuperate and get his strength back. Brother from the pain that you're going to have when you die and go to hell it's going to be a tiredness. You're never going to have no strength. Amen. It's going to be that miserable feeling Oh, you better hear me tonight. Hell is full of torment. Everything that scares you here, amen, that makes the hair stand, whether it's a screaming cat, or whether it's claustrophobia, when you die and go to hell, every bit of that will be bottled up. It'll be turned out on you. Oh, you better hear this preacher tonight. Amen, the Bible said, all nations shall be turned into hell. Forget God. Amen, we talk about lesbians and sodomy. Amen. Apparently nobody is remembering what God said. Amen. It's God's word. It's God's book. It's God's way. It ain't your way. It's his way to make it into the city of God. I was talking to a man about eternal security. And I told that man, I said everybody that preaches it is in danger of the judgment. And he said, why? And I told him, I said, because it's a lie. Had to tell men and women that they can be saved, that nothing can pluck them out of their hand. Hey Amen, you better rightly divide the words of truth. Hey Amen, and take every scripture for what it says. Hey, hallelujah, y'all hearing me tonight? I preached in a good while. I feel like warning men tonight. Hey Amen, about the regions of the damned. About that outer darkness. Hey Amen. I told him, I said, I want to tell you something. I said, now let's look at this together. Hey Amen, you believe that a man can get saved and there's nothing he can do to get out of that. If he goes back into fornication, he goes back into drinking, he goes back into cussing. Hey Amen. That brother, that man will still go to heaven. That brother said, absolutely. Hey Amen. I said, absolutely. I said, well, I'm going to tell you the way I believe. I believe the Lord can save a man. I bring him out of bondage. But if
if he chooses to go back into the beggarly element, that man will give an account for what he is when the Lord comes. I said, what if you're right? Amen, and what if I'm wrong? When we stand before judgment, I won't be condemned for believing you gotta live right. I won't be condemned for believing you gotta keep sin out of your life. But what if you're wrong and I'm right? Amen, brother, I'm gonna tell you tonight, people's gonna burn in hell. I believe in a line being damned. Of the sodomites ain't the only one. It's a believer in a lie. He's a million of them in the church. Every Sunday tell you they're saved. And if God would come tonight, the flames would engulf them and take them down a screaming. Oh, my brother, you better hear me tonight. Amen. We all, we all want to fear and quake. Amen. At the sight of this awesome God. Amen. When you go to hell, what's it gonna be like? The rich man said, give me a drink of water. I just a drip of water and put it on my tongue. When I was lost, when I was seeing my mother praying for me, I've never forgot that conviction that I was under when I was lost. Apparently it ain't on people. Amen, because you can come to camp meeting and by the next Monday, amen, they've done forgot some of the people that I was trying to work with and invite to the camp meeting, they came and he seemed like they caught on fire so fast, amen. But when Monday came, the the candle was done blowed out again, amen. I need something more than that. I need something that's gonna keep me, amen. I need something that's gonna sustain me, hallelujah, amen. What is it, it's that old fear preaching, it's that old hell preaching, amen, trying to scare everybody. That's exactly what I'm doing, amen. Not trying to beat around the bush about it. The Bible said, look at that last verse, put them in fear, oh Lord, amen, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. God wants you to fear him. God wants you to know where you die and you're going, ain't gonna be no water. Have you ever been so thirsty and your mouth got cotton dry? Amen, got cotton in your mouth and you felt like you was about to thirst to death? Amen, a lot of us ain't never been there. I was down in the mountains. I sang digging. It was really hot. We'd been out, all of our water bottles was gone. We got turned around and we got lost. We didn't know which way to go. All the creeks was dry. I was so thirsty I could have drunk a mud puddle. Oh, preacher, that's nasty. No, it ain't. That's how thirsty I got. When you die and go to hell and the flames are engulfing you, you're gonna want fire. You're gonna want water. But it ain't gonna be there. You're gonna scream for mama. But mama can't help you. You're gonna scream for daddy. You're gonna scream for the preacher. But they can't help you. You can stick your shoulders up if you want to. But the mighty man's gonna be brought down. He's gonna be humbled. He's gonna be brought down low. Oh, tonight, sinner man, and you better get on your knees and cry out to the God of heaven. I've been saved 30 years. Let me tell you something. Amen, I heard it said like this. If a man put up and took all, I believe it was Don Rich, that said if a man put in his account, a brother, all this money, and worked all of his life, and then went down at the casino and played one, a man deck of cards and took everything that he had. Just like that, it can be cast out. When you choose to go to sin, when you choose to stay the course of sin, amen, we're in a day. Everybody's right in their own eyes. Everybody's doing their own thing. Amen, if women wanna do what they wanna do, it don't matter what the Bible said. Men wanna do what they wanna do. It don't matter what the, but they's a settling day. Amen, do you hear me? He's a settling day. God's gonna settle the account. If you're not saved, you better get saved. If you're li- half living, you better get in. Have all you got tonight. What about the backsliders? They'll be in hell after God removed the candlestick. They'll be there. They'll be screaming. They'll be, amen, speaking in tongues. They'll be a sc- shouting and singing the songs of Zion. Amen, but they backslid. A lot of people kept it hid. Nobody knew it, but God knew it. I remember preaching a funeral one time about a man, 
Amen. I thought he was a Christian. Everybody I know said he was. I thought he was. But I found out a little later on that that man was a bootlegging and that man was a running around with other women. Amen. Found that out the weeks and he just wouldn't hear say. Two or three people told me that, Brother Andy. Amen. But he had it hid. You're not going to hide anything. When you stand before judgment, you hear me tonight. If you got hard feelings against somebody, you better get it right because you don't want to die and go to hell. Amen. You're not, everything's going to be you. Lord, have mercy. I can't preach it tonight. I can't warn you enough tonight about waiting on the other side of the breath of life. I got I'm afraid of hell. You ever tempted with sin? Sure I am. What keeps you from it? Hell. I'm afraid if I turn out away from to the Lord and go to my flesh and does what my flesh wants to do, hey man, what if God don't speak to me no more? What if God turns me over to reprobate? Hey man, we all think the scripture is talking to the sinner when we quote it in Proverbs chapter one. The Bible said being often reproved. Hey man, he wasn't talking to the sinner man. He was talking to his people. Hey man, being often reproved. God warned you and God told you. The Bible said buy the truth and sell it not. That's what the man of God preached here a few weeks ago. Buy it and sell it not. Hey man, for me to, to have the truth, you're gonna have to be hated. I have to stand for truth. People ain't gonna, hey amen, you're not gonna be popular. I have to stand for truth. Some of your own family I may rise against you. Hey amen. Somebody said, what is truth? Ask Pilate, he'll tell you. Jesus is truth. And if you stand for Jesus, hey amen, the world is gonna hate you tonight. I used to pray. I'm just gonna preach about a few more, a few more minutes here. Amen. We need to have a we need to have an altar service. We need to hear some moaning up here. We need to hear some mourning up here. Hey Amen. Some of you got babies right now. Babies right now. I told you what I asked John the other night when he was when he wrecked. I wanted to know. Hey Amen. I'd rather for every child that I've got. I'd rather for that boy right there. Hey Amen. My little grandson. I'd rather for him to die in his mama's arms right now. As to die and go to hell. Somebody said, Preacher, you're crazy. No, you have forgot God if you don't understand the mentality of that. Hey man, you have forgot what eternity really is. You got so caught up in your calendar flipping. Hey man, but that rich man, hey man, I guess it was during the days of Moses and the prophets four or five thousand years ago, he's still there crying today. Hey man, brother, when you die and go to hell, hey man, there ain't no getting out. The only hope that you got is zero hope. I'm the only prayer that, we, hey man, when you go to hell, the presence of God is turned away from you. God can't hear you pray. God can't hear you cry. God can't hear you moan. God can't hear you weeping. When you die and go to hell, you're there forever. I prayed. I seen a young boy. I asked God to show me things where I can preach it back to the people. What's it gonna be like in hell? I seen a young man. He was in his 20s. He had blonde hair. I can see him right now. I can see him. I was standing on the outside. I knew he was in hell. I knew he was. I knew God had answered my prayer, Roy. I knew God was showing me something about hell. Amen. Let me tell you, let me, let me rehearse what I heard in my dream. This has been probably 10 years ago. I heard that man do this. Hey! Can anybody hear me? That's what he said. Hey, can anybody hear me? Turn the light on. How long will it be dark like this? Turn the light on. You say you're scaring my children. I'm the best friend your children's got right now. If I can get hell preached into these children, hey man, if I can get hell preached into these little girls and these little boys, I'm the best friend that you're you, they man, that they've got right now. Hey man, because it'll never leave them. Hey man, that young man kept hollering, hey, hey man, how long's it gonna be dark? Let me out of here. Somebody turn the light on. 
Well, I'm right and you're right. And JD's right and Matt's right. And the Pentecostals right and the Methodists is right. And amen, the missionaries and the free wheels and they're right and they're right and you're right and I'm right. And hey man, I know what I'm right and I know what's right. And God's gonna settle it all. <laughs> Preacher sent me a message last night or yesterday sent me a uh, sent me a, uh, a a video of a preacher. I thought I'd listen to him. I listened to him for about ninety seconds. He started quoting Second Timothy about the perilous times, and he didn't preach out of the King James version. I texted him back and said, "I'm done with him forever. Don't ever send me nothing. I don't want to hear it." Amen. And them that change this book, and you don't have to rewrite a Bible. You can go and tell your neighbor, amen, something to be just as guilty as them. Do you hear what I said? You made you don't have to have a patent. Amen. Call me a new international version. If you change these words of this prophecy, or you add to the words of this prophecy, your name, what are you going to do with that eternal security? Amen. Your name shall be blotted out of the book of Don't Believe a Lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. I told a man, I told a brother from Mississippi. He was telling me about it. Some of his family standing in his face. The Bible said if God spared not the natural branches but cut them off, he said take heed and beware lest that God spare thee. He said I come on children off. I'll cut the stranger off as well. I'll close with this. You ever seen anybody die? And go to hell. I'm sure Terry has. You ever seen anybody die and go to hell? I have. Oh yeah, I've heard them screaming. I have, Joseph. I've heard them screaming. And see, we forget this in our daily walk. We think I, I'm discouraged. I'll just quit and go to hell. I'll just give up. No. and go to hell no. I'll just lay down the cross and go to hell is that what you're saying I can't go no further and go to hell how much more can I take and die and go to hell if you gotta get on your fingernails and claw your way in it'll be a small small price to hear the Lord say enter thou in Right. I got a call. 18 year old boy, cirrhosis of the liver. The doctor said that his liver was like a 60 and 70 year old man. He had drunk so much hard liquor. I got a call one night. I got a call one night. Some of y'all have heard me tell it. Can I tell it again? Because God let me experience that where I could tell it to you. God let me be in that hospital room where I could rehearse it in your ears where you could hear it and know the seriousness of it. The Bible said, amen, death, it don't come. Somebody read it the other day about Lazarus. He said, he that believeth in me shall never see death, taste death. God tasted death for every man. The child of God, he don't die. I'm not trying to confuse you. Amen. The Bible said, amen, the child of God, amen, we're dying out every day to sin. We died when we got born again. That's in your Bible. I ain't got to argue over that. It's explanatory. If you got any biblical wisdom at all, you know what I just told you is right. But the sinner man, amen, the writer said, I saw a pale horse. His name was Death. And he had a follower behind him. You know who it was? Hell. He's riding up this road right now. He's going in your communities. He's in this building. I didn't, I didn't know that young man. I know some of the family. I was standing there. I, went, I got off the elevator. I was standing there in the hospital. They asked me to come pray for him. The man got a, his midnight call. He said, are you Jason Nunley? And I said, I am. I said, my son is in bad, bad shape. Would you please come? And said, they're, they're getting ready to transport him up to one of the universities. I said, I'll, I'll be right there. I got my clothes on. I went out there. You see that neighbor that you're so lazy and you won't go see? He's going to go to hell. 
And that one that you ain't got time to witness to, they're going to die and go to hell. Because when I was a boy, it was very common to see preachers and Christians out knocking on doors and inviting people to church, but you don't ever, ever, ever see it now. Everybody's so busy. That young man, hey man, when I got there, he had all them things on him, on his stomach. I was standing there, leaning against the wall. I was leaning against the wall just like this. I'll go to judgment for what I'm telling you. All liars will go to hell. Does that make you feel better what I'm about to tell you? All liars will go to hell. I was standing there. I was standing there just like this. And I was watching that boy. He was a heavy set boy. He's probably 300 pounds. I was sitting there watching him. And I was, they, he didn't have no shirt on. They was, having, and they was taking all that stuff off of him, Clyde. He's getting ready to put him in the ambulance, take him up the road. They'd done all they could do out there. It was serious. Very serious. They was taking all that stuff off of him. And woman, his aunt was beside me, Daniel. She was telling me all of his condition about everything that was wrong with him, Brother Jack. And then all of a sudden, God is my witness. God in heaven bearing me witness. All of a sudden, that woman kept talking, and I couldn't hear her voice. I couldn't hear. She was talking right in my ear, and I couldn't hear. And then there was something that came by me, and I was watching that man. I was watching that man laying in that hospital bed. His stomach, he had a big old stomach, and that stomach was going up, and it was going down. And it was going up, and it was going down. It was going up, and it was going down. And then all of a sudden, something passed by me. And I asked the Lord. I said, God, what is this? Yes. And the Holy Ghost spoke back to me, Matthew, and said, this is death. Yes. Immediately, yes. immediately, 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 when the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said it was death, she straight lined. Yeah. She straight lined. They started hollering. They started screaming. The family was all gathered around. The doctor came over to me and said, will you please, are you a preacher? I said, I am. He said, will you take your, this family in the back room if I don't ever get out of my leather tonight? If I don't ever get out of my leather. That dad tackled me. And you know what he was saying? He's not saved. He's not saved. Bad God. Jack, when I got down on my knees, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. I'm a daddy too, Amanda. I got children too. Oh, how could I not pray? But as soon as I got on my knees, the Holy Ghost said, he's done in hell. Vicki, I prayed, I screamed, I cried. Oh, I preacher prayed. Oh, God, have mercy. The whole time I was praying, I knew he was done burning. I got up. Hey man, they were still hollering. Cold blue, cold blue, he's dead. That dad come over and he said, Preacher, please pray again. Pray again. Sir, I got back down. As soon as I got down again, Brother Day, the Holy Ghost said, He's done in hell. I got up from praying the second time. Here come mom. You know, moms seem like their heart is so easily broken. They're so soft. I'll never forget her standing in my face. And she was pulling on my horns just like this. She said, would you please pray one more time? I said, I will. Man, I got down again. Holy Ghost the third time said it's over he's done in hell we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people we love and we how many tears have you shed the month of June for your lost how many tears have you shed for the lost people that you love if we had a funeral tonight and you had to walk down that aisle and look right here at your lost loved one in a casket they're going to sing the songs of Zion when Lisa, when her brother died, I got to respect him. Doug and Lisa, her brother just died here just a few weeks ago. 
said, don't want no preacher. Don't want none of that stuff. Never did have none of that stuff while I was living. God respect that. What's the use of bringing it in at the tail end? Get, get the greatest evangelist in the world to stand over top of your casket. Get shine, hope, and all these kids and all these up here singing the most beautiful harmonized songs while you're burning in hell. Yeah, come on. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed. Sarah, would you come? If there's somebody in this building tonight, you ain't bowed your knees. I ain't talking about doing it in the closet. I'm talking about getting up out of your seat and coming down here and confessing Christ. Giving you something that's real, something that's genuine. It'll take him four little words out of your mouth. You can't, the Bible said if a man seemed to be religious, he's got a seem, he seems to go like he, he goes to church, but he, he can't keep bridle his tongue. This man's religion is in vain. It's in vain. You can go to church every Sunday in the world and still die and go to hell. You can put a $20 bill in every Sunday and still die and go to hell. Yeah. Who's going to go to heaven, preacher? Them that does the will of the Father. She's going to play right now. Is there anybody in this building tonight? Preacher, I'm worried about my soul. 